Welcome to lecture number 26 for ECE 341 Random Processes. Now, in our last lecture, we looked at the chi-squared test. That is a test of a distribution. With it, I can determine whether a die is loaded or fair, determine whether somebody fudged the data, determine how much I can fudge the data, or load a die, and get away with it. In this lecture, we're going to look at a couple examples, things you can do with a chi-squared test. So, Again, remember, chi-square test is the test of a distribution. The procedure is to collect some data, split the data into n bins, then compare the expected frequency, n times p, versus the actual frequency in each bin, divided by expected frequency, add them all up, I get the chi-squared score. Then use the chi-squared table to convert that to a probability. And typically what you see is a large chi-squared score means the data is consistent with the assumed distribution, um, basically things like the die is not fair. A really low chi-square score means you probably fudged the data, and numbers in the middle, typically if you get a percentage like 20, 30, 40 percent, is no conclusion. That's very typical. Example. In this lecture, we're going to look at world temperatures. Is the world temperature random or is there a trend? Look at a transistor gain. Do transistors have a uniform distribution? Do transistors have a normal distribution? I'll find out whether or not I'm psychic. And does something from two lectures ago, if I want to do a t-test with four populations, what I could do is take three of the scores and convert that to a single number, like take the maximum of B, C, and D. When I do that, is that really a normal distribution? Well, the chi-square test, I can check that. Temperatures. If you go to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, They've been collecting world temperatures since 1880, so we have 141 years of data. And this is what the data looks like. The null hypothesis is there is no pattern here, it's just random. Um, let's do a chi-square test to see is the data consistent with that hypothesis. Well, one problem with this is you've got to somehow figure out how do you split the data into bins. What doesn't work is I can't three bins, top third, middle third, lower third, because if I do that, then one third of the data is in the top third, one third of the data is in the middle third, one third of the data is in the bottom third. That doesn't really tell me anything. I can't really split up the data by the years. You know, doing the same trick, get this to erase. I can't split up the years as the first third, second third, third third, because then again, almost by definition, uh, third, the first third of the data contains a third of the data. The second third contains a third, and so on. So that doesn't work. Suppose I do both. If this truly was random, then I'd have actually one-ninth of the data up here, one-ninth, one-ninth. Uh, so each square should contain one-ninth of the data. I can count how many data points fall in each box. Then do a chi-square test. Is the data consistent with my assumed distribution? So that's what I'm going to do. Next thing I'm going to do uh, 12 bins. I'll split the data up into years every 35 years, four bins. I'll split the data hottest to coldest into quartiles. And the net result is I have 16 boxes. The null hypothesis is that the data is completely random. Um, Basically, hot, cold, doesn't really have any trend with the year. Well, what I should get is 1 16th of the data. Actually, this is 4 by 4. The 16th of the data is in each bin. Um, that's what I expect. I can count how many data points will wind up in each square, then compare the two. So let's do that. When I count, there are no occurrences up here, 0, 12, 23, 10, 15, 9, 1, 2, 23, 8, something. So that's the frequency. I expect it to be 1 16th of the total number of data points, 8.81 for each bin. Here's the actual frequency. In order, doesn't really matter when I sort these because I just take the difference squared, add them all up. But anyway, this gives you the chi-squared score. Different squared divided by 
difference squared divided by 8.81. Add them all up. Chi-squared score is 173. The number of bins is 16, so I have 15 degrees of freedom. Converting that to a probability, uh, 15 degrees of freedom. Chi-squared score is 174. That's a huge chi-squared score. Basically says, well, not exactly one. Nothing's 100%. It's 0.99995 rounded to one. So it's at least 99.995% certain that the data is not random. There is a pattern there. Chi-squared score doesn't tell you what the pattern is. All it tells you is I can reject the null hypothesis that there is no pattern. And that's actually not surprising. If you look at the data, it sure looks to me like there's a trend. But yep, the data, uh, chi-squared says also. That's for global weather. Let's just look at the weather in Fargo. Is the weather in Fargo changing? If you go to Hector Airport, it's, they've been measuring Fargo's weather since 1942. It has the high average low for each month and each year. Uh, this data is the yearly average temperature in Fargo since 1942. Is this random? Now with curve fitting, I could come up with a linear curve or parabolic curve to fit the data. With a chi-squared score, what I do is compare the data to an assumed distribution. So let's do the same thing we did before. Let's split the data up into nine. I've got the first third, second third, third third in years, hottest third, middle third, lowest third. So when I do that, one ninth of the data should wind up in each bin. That's my null hypothesis, saying basically there is no pattern, it's just random. I can count. How many data points wind up in each bin? So up here, there's 5, 10, 11, 11, 9, 6, 14, 7, and 4. Now let's set up chi-squared table. So here's the actual frequency in the different bins. Here's the expected frequency, one ninth of the data in each bin. Form the chi-squared score. Different squared divided by 8.56, different squared divided by 8.56, add them all up, I get 10.07. To convert that to a probability, I've got nine bins, meaning eight degrees of freedom. Chi-squared value is 10.07, gives a probability of 0.74. That's not a real high number, so that kind of says, based upon the data, I probably can't draw any conclusion or at 74% chance the data in Fargo is changing. Again, for Takai squared score, you want a really big number, like 90, 95, 99% certain to say it's changing, or really low score, 1%, 0.1% to say it fudged the data. Uh, neither one, so this is almost no conclusion. But just look at Fargo data, it's not real clear that it is changing based upon a chi squared score, at least with the test that I ran. So I can look at weather data to see, is there a trend or not? A weakness to the chi-squared uh, distribution is the way you analyzed it. It doesn't say what the trend is. It just says, is it completely random or not? Another example, let's look at a ZTEX transistor. So I was having office hours one day and it was kind of quiet. So I went out, took the 62 ZTEX 1051A transistors, measure the gain. Sort the transistors, lowest gain to highest gain, and this is what it looks like. So, uh, what's the distribution for the gain of a ZTEX transistor? Is it uniform? Is it Gaussian or normal? Let's start with the uniform distribution. Is this data consistent with the uniform distribution? So let's first pick the endpoints. Suppose it goes from 600 to 1200, uniform distribution. So it should look like a straight line. That same number of transistors in each bin. Let's define the bins just because it makes it easy to be each tick mark. So I'm looking at between 1200 and 1300, 1000 and 1200, and so on. Counting, there's no transistors up here. One, seven, 13, 16, and so on. That's the actual frequency. 
the expected frequency is it's a uniform distribution, never anything bigger than 1,200, never anything less than 600, same probability, same likelihood in each region. That's what I expect. Here's what I got. Now let's do a chi-squared test. Take the difference squared, divided by 10, difference squared, divided by 10, add them all up. Chi-squared score is 28.2. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 bins, meaning 7 degrees of freedom. Convert that 8.2, 28.2, to a probability. So using StatTrack with a chi-squared table, 7 degrees of freedom, chi-squared value is 28.2, Probability is 0.9998. So I can be 99.98% certain that this is not a uniform distribution. Or another way to say it, the data is inconsistent with the normal distribution uh, with a 99.98% certainty that the two are not the same. Okay, so let's try a normal distribution. If you go to MATLAB, I can find the mean, find the standard deviation. Is this data a normal distribution? Okay, what a normal distribution should look like is kind of an S-curve. It goes up and then straightens out. So the PDF, take the derivative drawn sideways, is that bell-shaped curve. That's what I expect. Is the data consistent with that assumed distribution? Well, the procedure, again, is to split the data into n regions. I'm going to use the same regions I had before. I can find the CDF at each region. The PDF is then the difference. So less than 600 is 0.17. Between 600 and 700 is 0.1 minus 0.017. 0.800 to 700 is 0.323. 1,000 to 1,000. So I did found the z-score, found the probability for each of these thresholds take the difference, and that's the probability of that region. Once I get the probability of each region, I know the expected frequency. I know the actual frequency from the chi-squared score. Difference squared divided by NP, difference squared divided by NP. And that's not right. That's point one two four. Uh, difference squared divided by NP, and so on. Add them all up, I get 6.13. Convert that to a probability using a chi-squared table. Or stat track. So I've got 8 bins, meaning 7 degrees of freedom. My chi-squared score is 6.13. Corresponds to a probability of 48%. And again, that's kind of a middle value. It says, no conclusion, if it was really large, that says the data is not a normal distribution. Really small, says I fudged the data. In the middle, says, well, um, data is consistent enough that I can't throw out the null hypothesis. So I can't rule out that this is a normal distribution. As opposed to a, a uniform distribution, I was really certain it's not a uniform distribution. Another example, am I psychic? So what I'm going to do is take a deck of playing cards, look at the first card, figure out whether it's a club, diamond, heart, or spade, flip it up and see if I'm right. If I'm right, take the next card. Is it club, diamond, heart, or spade? If I'm right, flip it up, keep track of how many times I'm right, how many times I'm wrong. Now use a chi-square table to find out, am I guessing or can I really tell what the card is? And when you do this, it's important that the cards are shuffled and face down, not face up. Uh, face up is too easy. So, trying that. I tried it. I was correct 10 times, incorrect 42 times. Let's calculate the chi-squared value. Here's the expected frequency. I should be right one-fourth of the time, 13 times. I should be incorrect three-fourths of the time. Again, there's four suits. I've got one important chance of being right. Take the difference squared divided by expected value, difference squared divided by expected value, that's the chi-squared score. Add them all up, I get 0.92. 0.9998.
Now there are two bins, meaning one degree freedom. My chi-squared critical value is 0.92. The probability then is 66. So the null hypothesis is I was guessing. I have no evidence, no evidence to show that I wasn't just guessing. If it was like 0 0.99, 0 0.95, it would say, hey, apparently I wasn't guessing. Must have been more is up. Uh, again, you kind of see that if I repeat this with the cards facing up, I'll be right every time. I'll have a huge high, huge chi-squared score. And what that would say is not that I'm psychic. It means that I can see what the face card, what the suit is. If I flip it over, I can't tell. And sadly, apparently I'm just guessing. Last example. In yesterday's lecture, two days ago, we looked at a t-test when I have four populations, like four people playing Hungry Hungry Hippo. A t-test doesn't work with four populations. It's really designed for one. I can handle two by forming a, w, form, forming a variable w that's a minus b. So can I take these three numbers and convert it to a single number? And one way to do that is take the maximum of b, c, and d. So well, I'm going to do the t-test t of a versus the maximum of b, c, d. So when we did that, I uh, ran a Monte Carlo simulation. B is a normal distribution, C is normal, D is normal. This guy called F, F is the maximum of B, C, D. There's the mean standard deviation. I assumed F is a normal distribution. Well, is it? Uh, well, this is a way we can find out. That's a chi-squared test. So let's try that. I'm gonna first collect some data. Here's a thousand data points that I collected for B, C, and D. F is the maximum of B, C, and D, and then sort it. So here's what the CDF looks like. Is that a normal distribution? Well, to run a chi-squared test, I'll group the data into n bins. Um, so I'll calculate the t-score, or z-score, because z-score and round down, that'll find out what's the number of standard deviations. So like 1.9 standard deviations goes to 1, 2.3 standard deviations goes to 2. Um, so I'll round down, take the sum, and what I get then is eight different bins, if I'm more than minus three standard deviations left, that happens zero times. Between minus two and minus three standard deviations, 19 times. Between minus one and minus two, 138 times, and so on. There's the frequency. To find the probability, I just look at the normal distribution. What's the area to the left of minus three? Area between minus two and minus three standard deviations, minus two and minus one, and so on. N times P is P times 1,000. That's the frequency I expect. Here's what I got from the chi-squared value. Take the difference squared divided by NP, difference squared divided by NP, and so on. Add them all up, I get 10.56. Now convert that to a probability. 10.56 uh, corresponds to a probability of 84%. So again, um, that's kind of the middle range. Even with a thousand transistors, I can't reject the hypothesis that uh, with a thousand data points, I can't reject the null hypothesis. I can't reject that this is a norm normal distribution. It seems pretty consistent with it. So somewhat surprising, if B, C, and D are normal distributions, the maximum of B, C, and D looks like a normal distribution, at least with only a thousand data points. So that's kind of some examples of a chi-squared test. Again, a chi-squared test is a test of a distribution. With it, you can see if your data is consistent with an assumed distribution. And that's lecture number 26, 
for ECE 341.